Hey y'all, welcome to the channel. Today we're checking out the map that saved the most lives. This episode was written during the coronavirus lockdown. And it's not not an uncoincidence that it's about a map that stopped a deadly disease. Welcome to Map Men. We're the men. And here's the map. Map Men, Map Men, Map, Map, Map Men, Men. These Map Men videos are always great. I know next to nothing about cholera. I mean, nothing. 200 years ago, cholera was one of the most feared illnesses or indeed any things in the world. Nobody knew how it spread or where it came from, but they did know that if you got it, there was a 50% chance you would die, sometimes within just one day. And a pretty unpleasant final <sighs> day it would be too. Within hours, cholera can cause teeth to protrude, eyes to sink and blood to thicken and turn blue, giving cholera its nickname, the Blue Terror. Well, I'm terrified. In one day? A bacterial disease causing severe diarrhea and dehydration. Ugh. Its original reservoir in the Ganges Delta in India. The current pandemic started in South Asia in 1961. It's there's one right now. As of the 25th of September 2023, there are 723,067 cholera cases, including 4,301 deaths. Oh, looks like it's in um. So it looks like India, South Central Africa, Iraq, Syria, Mexico, Cuba. Ethiopia, South Africa, is that Somalia? I don't know. I didn't know it was a current problem. This is because cholera causes the body to lose as much water as possible in the shortest possible time. As much as 20 liters in a day. <laughs> I think it's smart of them to show water going into a toilet instead of talking about all the diarrhea that surely it causes. Because it spread so quickly between people, scientists spent literally hours thinking about ways to fix cholera. <laughs> to a man, they were all convinced it was passed around through bad air, which they called miasma to try and sound clever. What is the actual definition of miasma? A highly unpleasant or unhealthy smell or vapor? It wasn't until someone called Jon Snow, not that Jon Snow, not that Jon Snow, this Jon Snow, did some thinking of his own that progress was finally made. The story starts in Old York in the olden days. John grew up in a poor part of the city where sewage flowed openly in the street and filth was a fact of life. Oh, oh look! An apple! <laughs> Snow was so grossed out by it, he became unusually health conscious and styled his- Is there a turd on that apple? I think there is. Oh, look! An apple! Oh, <laughs> so gross. Oh, gross. Okay. All right. Uh, there's a sound effect whenever he picks up the apple, too. I uh, appreciate that. Oh, look. An apple. <laughs> Snow was so grossed out by it, he became unusually health conscious and styled himself on a 21st century hipster. He didn't drink alcohol, was a vegetarian, and insisted on only drinking distilled water. <laughs> Snow escaped his life of squalor by being very good at maths and was offered a place at Newcastle to train as a physician. He first witnessed the grim effects of cholera while treating patients in the nearby coal mining town of Killingworth. He noticed that men who worked down the pit were dying of cholera at exactly the same rate as everyone else, even though they were nowhere near the foul air of the town. He began mm. to suspect cholera had nothing to do with bad air, instead suspecting it might instead have something to do with the water, instead. But because Victorian scientists really enjoyed using the word miasma, they all ignored his radical theory. Snow would need hard proof to convince the doubters, and finally got the chance years later when he moved down to London. In 1854, cholera struck Soho in the heart of London and Jon Snow had just moved into a house in the heart of Soho, on Sackville Street, right by the Itsu. What's the Itsu? That's gotta be a joke, right? Sackville Street, right by the Itsu. A British chain of East Asian-inspired fast food shops. Okay, funny. He was in the perfect place at the perfect time. Yes! <laughs> I mean, how awful. Snow went from door to door, recording as much as he could about the cases that had occurred so far. Cholera? Good. Excitingly, he then plotted his data onto a map. <laughs> When Snow looked at the data he'd collected, he made an astonishing discovery. Almost all the recorded cases occurred near the Broad Street water pump. The further from the pump he went, the fewer deaths he recorded. Uh -huh. A clear pattern had emerged. What Jon Snow was doing was one of the earliest known examples of data journalism, which doesn't sound sexy and isn't sexy, but I still like it. <laughs> still, in order to finally prove to all the miasmarists out there that it really was the pump, Snow needed a watertight case. That's a good pun. I know. But there appeared to be some anomalies, such as an isolated case miles away to the north in Hampstead. How did the cholera get all the way up there? He went to speak to the elderly victim, and it turned out her niece had been bringing her the water from Broad Street, because, like many others, she thought the Broad Street water tasted sweeter. 
and we'll try not to think about the fact that sweeter in this case was another way of saying contained sewage. <laughs> <laughs> well, so this person's niece was hauling water? The bucket says, Dear Auntie, happy birthday. Enjoy this lovely bucket of water. Lots of love. Frutella. How far is Soho from Hampstead? 4.1 miles. That's a long way to haul a bucket of water. I hope she had a horse. And we'll try not to think about the fact that sweeter in this case was another way of saying contained sewage. Ugh. As well as cases far <laughs> away from the pump, there was another type of anomaly that needed explaining. Non-cases really close to the pump, such as the workhouse on nearby Poland Street, which had bizarrely recorded hardly any deaths at all. So Snow hardly went to visit any. the workhouse and found they had their very own water well ah. for water. What a surprise. There were also no deaths at the local ale distillery. When Snow tried to interview people who worked there, nothing they said made any sense. Which made sense, because it turned out that instead of getting cholera, they'd been getting drunk. No water, no cholera. <laughs> Every apparent setback to Snow's water theory only ended up making his case even waterier and tighterier than ever before. So he took his map to the local health commission, who were convinced enough to remove the handle from the Broad Street pump. And a good job they did, because the cases immediately started drying up. Wow. The yeah, I know. But how did that pump Wait, get what? infected in the... And a good job they did, because the cases immediately started drying up. The other two were better. Yeah, I know. Oh, it's pump. But how did that pump. pump get infected in the first place? He found the answer with the help of a holy gossip monger. Henry Whitehead, the local priest, knew everybody's business, including who had diarrhea <laughs> when. With a combination of Whitehead's nosiness and Snow's clever map making, they were able to trace the outbreak back to case zero. A baby living at number 40, whose mother had been washing nappies into the house's underground cesspit. Not, not unsurprisingly, they found cracks between the cesspit and the well, finally confirming that everyone had been drinking number 40's number 2's. Uh... We have to take our hats off to this gruesome twosome for collecting so much data over what must have been months of work. Actually, the whole wow. endeavour from start to finish took just th That's disgusting. They were all drinking baby <laughs> I don't think that's as disgusting as the Typhoid Mary story, though. The lady who was not washing her hands and she was making food for everybody. We have to take our hats off to this gruesome twosome for collecting so much data over what must have been months of work. Actually, the whole endeavour from start to finish took just three days. Wow! Really? Shockingly, despite wow. all the evidence they gathered and with the outbreak cleared up... How did they get... How did they interview all those people in three days? Shockingly, despite all the evidence they gathered and with the outbreak cleared up as a result of their work, the mainstream miasmarists continue to ignore Jon Snow's findings. And the local council soon popped the handle back on the Broad Street pump as if nothing was ever wrong with it. As always seems to happen when someone does something amazing, Jon Snow died before his work was accepted. <laughs> Luckily today, medical experts are always taken seriously, and their advice is always <laughs> listened to by people in charge who are never interested in personal political gain over rigorous, evidence-led, peer-reviewed scientific facts. Right. Except, Except sometimes, sometimes it isn't, which is why every year to this day, the medical community holds the Pump Handle Lecture, during which a mock handle is ceremonially removed and replaced in recognition of the struggle of getting people in charge to listen to doctors. Wow. Perhaps the most fun way Jon Snow is remembered today is in the form of this pub, the Jon Snow Pub. We're not sure how the famously teetotal Jon Snow would have felt about this, but either way, cheers to Jon Snow. Cheers. Is that the actual pump? Hmm, tastes quite sweet. <laughs> nice. Pump handle lecture. They weren't lying. I love that they call it the pump handle lectures and haven't tried to make it sound all boring and official. Well, there it is. That was the pump. Wow. There's a Jon Snow Society. My gosh, this one guy. If he had not been around and figured out what was going on, we'd all be dead. Wow, what a fascinating little story. That whole thing only took three days. So it's all about the water. Dirty water did it. Poop water. Yeah, so many things happen whenever you eat poop. Isn't that weird? Actually, it makes sense. How did Jon Snow die? Did he die of cholera? Snow suffered a stroke while working in his London office. He was 45 years old. He never recovered. Thanks, like six days later, it's been speculated that his premature death may have been related to his frequent exposure and experimentation with anesthetic gases. He died trying to help us out, y'all. Much uh, respect to Mr. Jon Snow. Life today would be a little worse without him, I bet. Thank you, Jon Snow. Anyway, this was another great Mad Men video. Great job, Jay and Mark. Thank y'all for watching. Thank you for recommending, and I'll see you next time. Later.